this is Stampy and welcome to another Let's Talk video. Today I'm going to be doing a book review. This is going to actually be the second book review that I'm going to be doing on the, the channel. It wasn't something that I expected I'd end up doing, but hey, that's what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a review of Wild Rescuers Guardians of the Tiger. And the reason uh, I'm reviewing this book is because it was actually written by Stacey Play. So uh, I will be honest here, I'm going to be trying to do as unbiased a review as possible. But of course, if you don't know, Stacey is my friend. And whenever you're reading a book and you know who the author is, you know, especially if it's your friend, then, you know, you can't help but sort of reading it, you know, read it in their, their voice and kind of, you know, picture them, I guess, when you're you're reading it. So I'm going to be as unbiased as I can be. But just to be honest, at the, the beginning, I do know the, the author of the, the book. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do any spoilers. I'm, of course, going to talk about the book because I'm reviewing it. I do like a, a brief summary of like the, the entire story. Of course, no major plot points or the ending or anything kind of just more about the the setting and what the the story is about but of course if you want to know literally nothing about the the book and just read it then i mean don't watch or read any reviews <laughs> just go read the book <laughs> there is also a uh, an audiobook version available uh, which is actually written by stacy herself which is really funny because she's telling me how it's strange because she is the lead character in the the book so she's reading it and she's saying, Stacy picked up a book and Stacy walked out of the cave and she's kind of reading about herself in third person, which is a, a little bit weird for, for her. But uh, I listened to the, the preview of the, the audiobook version and it sounds great. So uh, if you don't like to, to read, you'd rather just listen to it or listen to, to Stacy reading it to you, uh, then that version uh, is uh, available for you as well. So uh, right then, what's the, the book about? So it's loosely based on Dogcraft and Dogcraft is a series that Stacy uh, has been doing for a very long time basically I think since I've known her uh, inside uh, of Minecraft uh, I am familiar with Dogcraft I've seen episodes I understand what Dogcraft is but you know I'm not watching every single episode so my opinion on the book is based from someone that has a small understanding but you know isn't understanding every single reference to the the series and is going into you know all of the the characters mainly the the wolves not knowing their characters already which I think is a good place to, to come from because there's going to be a lot of people reading the, the book that are going to be in the, the same situations but there might be certain things that I missed in fact I know the stuff that I missed there was even one bit towards the end of the book where something major happened I won't spoil it and I had to just message Stacy about it and I messaged her saying like what's going on with this and then she actually sent me a link to her dogcraft episode where basically almost the exact same thing had happened inside of Dogcraft and it was kind of really cool seeing you know where the idea of what happened in the the book kind of happened inside uh, of Dogcraft so it's not a Minecraft book it is based on a series which is set in Minecraft and there are a lot of Minecrafty things you know, there might maybe some caves, maybe some might be some mine shafts, and just a lot of the the items and the the food are things from Minecraft. For example, she has a farm in the book, and I think she's growing like pumpkins and carrots and potatoes and a lot of the the specific things that you grow inside of Minecraft. And like one bit where she walks past a couple mushrooms, and there's a brown one, and then there is a red one with uh, white spots on. Of course, they are just two types of mushrooms. They just happen to be the types of mushrooms that you find uh, inside of Minecraft. So that's basically where it ends it's not limited by minecraft like nothing is blocky and you know there are a lot of things and items and stuff that you wouldn't find in minecraft it's much more based on the stories that happened inside of dogcraft you know rather than being specifically anything to to do with minecraft so that might be a, a good or a, a bad thing for, for you. I think for, for me personally, it was a good thing, you know, just because it wasn't limited by what Minecraft is. And, you know, it's basically just a much more realistic story, I guess, set in the, the real world. Well, it's kind of set in the real world. It's almost set in the real world, but it's almost a little bit of a magical world because... Stacy's relationship with the, the wolves isn't like a normal person would have a relationship with the wolves. One, she's living with a bunch of wide, uh, wild wolves inside of the, the taiga, which is basically kind of like a almost foresty, swampy area. But she communicates with the wolves almost like they're people. So if she talks to them, they understand her. So if I go like, Alex... You know, Alex might look at me, but that's about it. Like, she can't <laughs> properly understand me. But with these wolves, you know, the wolves can read, for example. Some of them can. And, you know, she can say, right, you come with me and you go there. And then they all understand her. So it's not just Stacy by herself and a bunch of wolves following her. There is a proper relationship that she has with the wolves. And there's quite a lot of them. I think there's like six or seven wolves or something. I never really counted how many there, there were. But uh, when I uh, first opened the, the book, firstly, there's an amazing map of the, the tiger, which is 
is really good to, to get your bearings. And it's kind of nice to, to go back and look at the, the map when you're reading the story just to, to understand. And then there's like a page kind of talking about all of the, the characters. And there are a lot of Arctic white wolves. And I was thinking, okay, I don't really know them from Dogcraft. Are like they all going to blend into you know each other do they stand out enough but you know almost from the the beginning you immediately understand the personalities of the the wolves and it's not like there's a chapter where she goes in depth and says like you know this wolf is like this and this is the one that's like this and this is the one that's like this but just you know there's a bit of explanation but then just from their actions the way they react around stacy you know you get to instantly understand the personality uh, personalities of these wolves and they don't blend into each other they all have individual uh, personalities and even though they're not talking you know you could say if this wolf was in this situation i think they're probably going to, to react like this which is really good because you know that can't be a, a very uh, easy thing to to be able to to do and she was able to uh, to master that really well so that was fantastic uh, one of the other things that i liked about it is there isn't a stereotypical villain like a lot of stories they have the bad person who you know is the person that's trying to to take over the world or you know do damage to the the hero uh, but in this case there isn't that and there's a few times where i thought that was going to happen quite early on in the the book um right one second i'm gonna i'm gonna let my dog out i think she needs toilet <laughs> one second Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so, um, yeah, what, what I was saying, basically there isn't just the bad person. And there was a part uh, quite early on where there was another group of wolves that were introduced. And I was like, okay, these are going to be the bad wolves. Stacy wolves are the good wolves. These wolves are going to attack her or cause problems for her. And, you know, there are things that these wolves do that do cause problems, but they aren't the bad wolves. You know, there's always just a gray area. And then uh, another place where that kind of happens is the, the humans. You know, Stacy doesn't really like humans. They're kind of almost destroying her homes in the way that humans do destroy the homes of a, a lot of animals. But the humans aren't just the bad guys. There are good humans and there are bad humans. There are good wolves and there are bad wolves. And there's a lot of grey area in the middle as well. And that was really good. And another thing that was really refreshing for me is that, like, she isn't trying to save the world. Like, I read a lot of sci-fi books, I read a lot of fantasy books, and there's always this big grand epic adventure, and unless, you know, you're able to, to do this, then the world is going to be destroyed, and everyone's going to be killed, and it's exciting, and it's dramatic, but when every single story is about that, it gets a bit fatiguing, and the, the odds just seem lessened just because, oh, they're trying to save the world again, you know, the heroes are eventually going to win, and they're going to defeat the bad guys, and it's more about just the, the journey, because you know how it's going to, to end. In this story, Stacey isn't trying to save the world. She is kind of quite a small piece of the overall world, I guess. She is just living in this one place. She doesn't roam very far. And basically, all she wants is the equilibrium. She wants to stay happily living with her wolves and nothing to, to change, really. But she loves the, the taiga, the, the area that she's in. And that area becomes threatened and her wolves become threatened. And even though she isn't trying to save the world, she's trying to save her world. And you get just as invested in that as if, you know, it was Earth was about to blow up uh, or something. And so that was really fantastic and just really refreshing for me. Just because it's been, you know, so different uh, compared to, to everything else that I've been... Um, uh, reading recently which has been great. Uh, one thing that I will mention is that uh, there's a whole load of fantastic artwork. I kind of made a bit of a mistake because uh, we got sent this copy of the, the book and Squashy was reading this version and I was reading the, the Kindle version which is where I normally read all of my books. But the problem is, is well, it's not really a problem, but uh, one of the things that's great about this book is all of the, the artwork. Like, throughout the, the entire book, there's a, a whole load uh, of, uh, of pictures, sometimes a smaller one like this, sometimes, you know, one that fills the entire page. And the artwork is fantastic. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, it really does help the, the story, especially when it's uh, explaining a, a particular scenario or even just the, the area. You know, Stacy might be mentioning certain types of trees and maybe I don't know exactly what those trees look like. And then suddenly to have a picture pop up, I'm like, ah, I get it. And it really uh, does, you know, help draw you into the, the story. And uh, yeah, on the, the Kindle, of course, the screen was quite small. And so I feel like I lost out a little bit uh, there. 
Okay, sorry, I just let Alex back in. <laughs> she was barking to, to get in. I feel like this is all very appropriate, seeing as the, the book is all about wolves and a dog as well, so I feel like having a dog barking and playing up in the, the background. I feel Stacy would like that, at least. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? I don't remember. Oh yeah, the pictures. Yeah, so the artwork is absolutely fantastic. There's even like some pictures that I requested from Stacy that I would want a poster on my wall because they are absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, and I really think they do help the, the story. They are are all uh, in black and white. I don't believe there is a version to have them in colour, but I think that would be fantastic. And the reason they're in black and white is because it would be way more expensive to have them in colour. It keeps the uh, the price of the, the book down, is uh, which is good. But if the, the artwork was originally done in colour, it would be great to, to have like a kind of like a special edition or something I think would be great for for birthdays and I just kind of want to see you know what all of the the pictures look like in color because you can see from like the the front page what they would look like but maybe they were already like originally done in black and white anyway so maybe those don't uh, even exist but uh, yeah there's another great thing about the the book there is going to be a second one coming I think at the moment there's basically uh, confirmed to be two books, who knows whether they're going to go and carry on. So the first book does end at a little bit of a cliffhanger, it's not like the book just suddenly ends or anything, but everything isn't completely summed up. You know, there is a nice conclusion to the, the book, but you can definitely see that it's kind of, you know, there, there's some questions that are left unanswered, there's some things that are set up to, to be, you know, a big problem from Stacy that aren't all resolved uh, in this book. So uh, if you are going to get this one, you know, definitely be prepared to, to have the, the next one as well, because that is where the, the story is going to kind of directly uh, continue. But, you know, the fact that Stacy, you know, I know she has written in the, the past and stuff, but, you know, she's primarily a, uh, a YouTuber. You know, she's done a whole lot of other things, but, you know, she's not, you know, her first job isn't as an author. You know, the writing is really good. It's very easy to read. Like, you're never... You know, sometimes when the people write a story, they, I don't know, like they, they try and make themselves sound fancy or, you know, they will kind of jump around, you know, in the, the story a little bit more than maybe they should and it kind of hurts the, the story. You know, this is extremely easy to read. So maybe you're someone that doesn't read regularly, uh, but you're a big fan of Stacey's videos or of Minecraft or you know, you'll just like to get into stories. This would be a fantastic uh, place to, to be able to, to start for for that. But, you know, someone that reads books regularly like me, you know, I was really enjoying it and kind of just went straight through the, the entire book and read it really fast just because I wanted to, to find out what happened next. So yeah, really uh, fantastic job. Uh, so well done, Stacey, if you end up watching this. And uh, yeah, uh, it's called Wild Rescues, uh, Wild Rescuers, Guardians of the, the Tiger. Uh, I think it's pretty much available anywhere that you'll be able to, to get a, a book from. Uh, even if it's not kind of available in shops, you'll be able to get it online or in the, the ebook version. Uh, so yeah, really recommend it. Looking forward to the, the next one. Uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video and uh, yeah, I will see you all later. Bye!